Hi kids, I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me for another Wellspring Kids Church. I had a great day out last week with the family at this place called Wadston Manor. Now it was built, would you believe it, as a weekend residence, just for the weekend, for entertaining visitors. Huge place like that. And also for displaying this collection of paintings and valuable antique objects. Uh, objects that looked a bit like this. Oh, Barney, so that's where you are, hiding. Except this one, this subject, isn't very valuable. It's kind of hollow, but you know, you know the sort of thing that you get around country houses. Now, what's the manor was built for a guy called Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild. Hey, actually, do you think he looks a bit like me? Um, if I just need to grow the beard, colour it black and put on a jacket, maybe I'm related and have a claim to this amazing manor. Anyway, back to reality. Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild was born getting on for 200 years ago in 1839. He lived for 59 years and then he died in 1898. And that's the reality of life. That's what the world is like. People live for a number of years and then their lives come to an end. Whether we live in a huge mansion or whether we live in a small hut, whether we're wealthy with lots of money or whether we have very little money, we all live for the years we're given and then our life comes to an end. Someone hundreds of years ago was thinking about this and wrote Psalm 103 which says, As for us, our life is like grass. We grow and flourish like a wild flower and then the wind blows on it and it's gone. No one sees it again. We're like grass or wild flowers that grow and then are gone. Now you may know somebody who's died recently and it's very sad to know that we won't see them again, at least in this world. It can affect us quite deeply and it usually helps to talk with others and help each other through it. And of course Jesus is with us to help us through times like this. He came so that we would know him forever, after death as well. Do you remember the man crucified next to Jesus? We can see he believed in Jesus because he said to him, Jesus, remember me when you come as king. I guess he must have heard Jesus' teaching and uh, seen the miracles or heard of them. But Jesus replied to him, I promise you that today you will be with me in paradise. What a promise, what an incredible promise. And it's a promise for us too, as we put our trust in Jesus, whoever we are, however much money we have, whatever sort of house we live in, it's a promise of life with Jesus after death. But what about life now? What do you think we should be doing while we're living life here on earth? Well, I want to show you a Snoopy cartoon I think is great. Charlie Brown has obviously got a bit depressed and fed up, like we all do, and is saying, someday we will all die, Snoopy. And Snoopy replies, true, but on all the other days we will not. Good old Snoopy, I think that's a great way to be thinking about life. Each day is a gift from God to live, allowing Jesus to be part of our life, learning who God's made us to be, and exploring the opportunities he gives us. And if we make mistakes and do something wrong, we can say sorry and receive his endless forgiveness. He is so good, so forgiving to us. We can live with Jesus in our hearts in this life and afterwards. We've got a Bible story next about someone called Lazarus who died who was a friend of Jesus, and Jesus comes along and does something about it. So let's watch it. Stories of the Bible. Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead. This is Jesus, Heyo. who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. 
While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love. He did many miracles and healed people of their sickness. Jesus had a friend named Lazarus who was very sick. <coughs> he had two sisters named Mary That's okay. and Martha Here you go. who sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. So come on. But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it happened for the glory of God. Uh, what? So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. All right, I, let's go. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Uh, are you sure? But his disciples did not think this was a good idea because the people in Judea had tried to kill Jesus, but Jesus told them they were going anyway. He said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. Eh, be okay. The disciples thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, so Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. What? And for your sakes, I'm glad I wasn't there. For now you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. Thomas said to his fellow disciples, let's go too and die with Jesus. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in his grave for four days. Many people had come to be with Mary and Martha because their brother had died. When Martha got word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said. He will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Then she returned to Mary. She told Mary, the teacher is here and wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus's grave to weep. Oh, let's go too. So they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she said, Lord, if only you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him. Where have you put him? He asked them. They told him, Lord, come and see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him? But some said, This man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry and he arrived at the tomb. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. Wait, hold on, Jesus! But Martha protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus said, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? Go ahead. So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me. But I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here. So they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out! And Lazarus came out, his hands, feet, and head wrapped in cloth. Uh -huh. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Wahoo! Many of the Jews who were there believed in Jesus, for he had raised Lazarus from the dead. So there's another, yet another incredible event in Jesus' life. This time not just healing an illness, but bringing someone who had died back to life. 
Did you notice Jesus was angry, yes angry, that death had taken Lazarus from his friends and also that Jesus cried along with Lazarus' friends. He feels with us and for us. And did you notice Jesus say, I am the resurrection and the life. How can someone say that unless, unless he was God's son, showing God's power to us? Now, after Lazarus was raised back to life, he'd have carried on getting older again and eventually died again. But there's something even more wonderful to come because after Jesus died, after three days, you know this of course, God raised him to life again, but never to die again, to be alive forever for us. He certainly was and still is the resurrection and the life. So let's pray and then join together in a song because there are so many reasons to worship Jesus. So let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the astonishing power you demonstrated in Jesus, bringing Lazarus back to be alive after he died, to enjoy being with his friends again. We praise you, Lord Jesus, that you are the resurrection and the life, and we put our trust in you. We love you, Lord, for all your goodness, patience, compassion and kindness to us. Amen. So let's finish with that song. You can sing along and jump around to it if you want. Shake yourselves about a bit. And there's a million reasons to thank God. Have a great week and I look forward to seeing you again. Bye. Thanks for watching Life Tree Kids. Thank you God for saving me. Saving me Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep Rescue from the middle of the ocean deep You set my feet on solid ground You set my feet on solid ground I once was lost but now I'm found I once was lost but now I'm found Everything I have I owe it all to you For everything you are and all you do Lord